My name is Pjernsen and I'd like to tell you about what is macros. This session will take about 10 minutes, where the first five minutes will be about a theory and what it actually is, and then the last five minutes will be a very quick demo so you can see how it works. So the agenda for this session is why do we need macros, types of macros, where are macros used, and then there's the demo time. So first of all, why do we need macros? We need macros because handling content is about creating and editing content. It's about the user experience. So when we have that content created, we need something to make that content dynamic. So that could be collecting specific kinds of content, displaying them in lists, it could make be news summaries, it could be forms, and it could be all sorts of other sorts of stuff that isn't supported directly in HTML. So we need macros to encapsulate functionality that's handled by either XLT or .NET to put directly into our templates so we don't have a large mix of functionality and markup in our templates. So that's why we are encapsulating it in macros. So in short, macros are small pieces of functionality. This could be a news list, or it could be a form, or it could be something that the user doesn't see, but something that could execute something on the server. So, types of macros. I already mentioned there's two types. One of those is XLT and the other one is .NET macros. XLT macros are used only to display content. You use XLT to fetch content from Umbraco, displayed in lists, in tables, or whatever kind of HTML, or XML, or Flash, or PDFs you want to generate with this XLT. It's all about presenting raw data from Umbraco. The net macros are a bit more complicated because it could be whatever you can build in .NET. So whatever you can build and put inside a user control or a .NET custom control, you can execute directly on the template in Umbraco. So it means that it's a much more versatile macro, but if you only need to display data, you should stick with the XSLT macros. So where are macros used? The most obvious places to use macros are lists and forms. Those are the two most basic needs you have for a macro. So this is just a quick screen, screen dump of a website we'll be working with in the demo. And I've marked out the places that would typically be powered by an XLT macro. You can see up in the top we have the top navigation, which is a basic list just styled with the style sheet. And then uh, just below the picture we have sub pages and news which are also based on XLT. And these areas are completely dynamic, so when, whenever you update something in your website, these areas update automatically, as will be shown in the demo in just a second. What's important to remember is that when you use a macro, especially an XLT macro, there's no specific design you have to use. You can generate whatever you need uh, using XLT. So you could generate um, PDF markup instead if you want to do something like that. Or you could generate table markup, or you can generate semantic list-based markup for your navigation. It's completely up to you. This is just an example of what you can do. Because we're working with raw data, it pulls out information into our template and displays something to the user. Our macros don't really care what it is. It just does something where every piece of item is asked to fetch from our raw data storage. Now, look at something else that's a bit more complicated. That'd be using forms in our macros. This is a .NET based form, so this is actually a user control that's created and then it's fetched by the macro directly into the template. So here we can actually import .NET functionality directly into our templates without having to do very much that uh, on Braco specific. So if you have some user controls you used in another project, you can actually import them directly into on Braco and get them into your tables, uh, into your templates fairly easy. So, now it's demo time. Right, so I'll just log into Umbraco. And to create a macro, well first we should just take a look at our website. So I'll just open up our website and go to 3dhome.aspx. 
Then here you can see there's already some static lists. We have a categories list, and up in the top we have um, a static HTML-based navigation. And it's static because it was in the HTML template already. So we now need to replace it with something that's dynamic and presents our subpages, products, and contact us. So we'll go to our XLT files. See, that's already created one for us because this is only focused on showing the macro itself. So we'll create a macro, call it my top navigation. And in here, when the macro is created, you can see I can pick an XLT file, or a .NET user control, or a .NET custom control, or a Python file. So I'll just choose my menu.xslt, which is which is an XLT file I created previously. And see further down, I can set a caching and the period of caching if it's something very complex I need to have cached. So I'll just save this and go to my templates because now I need to replace the static HTML in my template with something that's dynamic in the macro. And again, remember that it's not important what's in the XLT file at the moment. It's just important that we can take something that's very static from our template and replace it with a macro. So that's what we're doing now. I'll just click the Insert Macro dialog, pick my macro. Then you can see where the navigation, static navigation was before. I've now inserted a macro placeholder tag. And all it actually does is it references a macro with a certain alias, and that's basically it. So I'll just save this and go to my page. So you have refresh it now. You can see it now shows the sub pages of the top page. Now, if you go back to our developer section um, and create a new macro, because I'd like to demonstrate something else. So we'll create a macro called sitemap, click create, and again I'll set it to use a pre-made XLT file, which is called sitemap, and this time I'll tell it to use it in the editor, and click save. Now what I've done now is I've enabled this macro to be used in a rich text editor. So I just go and create a new page in here, and call sitemap. and open up the page, you can see I have the red text editor, and click the macro button up there and pick sitemap. And just click OK again. And now I can see Umbraco has inserted a yellow box into my red text editor, which is a placeholder for dynamic content. So if I go to my web page again and refresh it, you see of course it made a sitemap page up in the top navigation, if I click there, you can see it now inserted a list directly inserted with, with links to the different pages. So we create a new page in here called Chainsaw. Just publish it, don't need any content on it. And then go back and refresh our sitemap page, which contains our macro. You can see that it's updated its contents. So the brilliant thing about this is that you don't need to have a specific template for very advanced pages. In some cases, you can just insert the macro directly into the editor and have dynamic content directly in your editing environment. So you can just reuse the same template, but insert very advanced dynamic content directly into the template. So to recap this session, We've learned that there's two types of macros, XLT and .NET. And we've learned that XLT macros are used for displaying content and fetch raw data from a macro and display it in templates or in the Rex text editor. The .NET is made for executing server-side code or forms directly in the template or for sending information back to a macro using either user control or custom control. We can use both kinds of macros in templates and we can also use them in the rich text editor. And of course, the macros support caching and is more or less a click and play user experience. So no hardcore coding to actually use different .NET controls fetched from the repository or from the templates used in Umbraco. You can actually use them straight away just by pointing and clicking and there's a big load of functionality hidden in Umbraco. Um, 
to actually make it work straight away.